Hello and welcome to this slightly longer tutorial in which we're going to explore the 3D logo ident process by creating a BMW logo in 3D. So we're going to create a 3D logo ident from beginning to end, including modeling, animating, applying textures, lighting and rendering out the finished piece. First of all, we should start with a reference image. In your case, this might be a sketch or a drawing, but in our case, we're going to use a JPEG of the BMW logo downloaded from Google. Next, we import the image into Blender as a background image. In 3D view, press N and then load it in by scrolling down to the background image section and finding the file on your computer's hard drive. Change the view to front ortho so you can model based on the reference image by pressing 1 and then 5. Start by identifying the different shapes in your object. In this case we have a large silver circular shape with a smaller black circular shape inside it with the letters B, M and W on it. The letters are raised and inside this shape, there is another gray circular shape, divided into four quarter pizza slice shapes, two of which are blue and two of which are white. There's also a gray or silver cross in the center of the logo. The surface of the object is partially reflective, as we can see uh, from the white shine in the corner, reflecting off of the surface. So let's begin with the outer shape. We can create this by adding torus shape from the mesh menu by pressing shift a or using the add drop down menu at the top of the screen and before we go any further it must be said that there are many many different ways that you can model or create objects there's no right or wrong way if it works it works but obviously certain methods and techniques are easier or quicker more efficient uh, than others so next we can flatten the shape by switching views and by using the scale tool on an axis by pressing S and then X, Y or Z depending on which view you're in. Next we're going to duplicate the shape and then scale it down a bit smaller. This is for the black inner circle. So we're going to scale it down, reposition it and try to match as close as we can closely as we can the reference image that we started with. Now we're going to add a black color material to the second shape so that we can see it better and differentiate it from the silver back by opening the materials tab and then adding a new slot and material and changing the color to black. Now we will move the inner circle to a new layer by right clicking to select it then pressing M on the keyboard and choosing layer 2 from the menu. Finally, make layer 2 visible by shift clicking on it. Layers work a little bit differently in Blender than say Photoshop or Illustrator which you may be used to. As the circle in the middle doesn't have a hole in its center, we're going to use a UV sphere for it. You can add this UV sphere on layer 3. It's often good to keep different elements of your object on separate layers. Scale and reposition it so that it's roughly the same size and shape as the guide image. And now we're going to put it back onto our silver logo disc. So if we flip it around, we can see that the shape currently has no back. So we're going to select the back torus shape and then press the N key. Take a note of the X and Y values under the dimension heading. This is the width and height of our torus shape. So we're going to add a circle shape from the mesh menu by pressing shift A. And then we're going to type in the same X and Y values under dimension to match the size of our torus. Go into edit mode and select all the vertices and extrude them. Now scale towards the center to fill in the shape of your circle. 
Reposition your new circle so that it forms the back of your disk. Now we're going to model the four quarters of our logo's center, the white and blue quarter shapes. So shift D to duplicate the disk that we created in the center, and then move it onto a new layer by pressing M and choosing the next one. Press tab to enter edit mode, and then choose vertex selection. Disable the limit selection to visible button. OK. Press B to enter box select mode, and then select all the vertices in the bottom right quarter of the circle. Press X and then delete the vertices. And now one quarter of our shape has been removed. Repeat this process until you only have one quarter left, which is what we want to end up with. Next, we need to stitch up the shape by adding faces to the open edges. Right click and hold shift to select four vertices near each other. Then press F to create a face. Blender works out the mathematical equations between those four vertices to create edges if they're not already there and faces in between. You want to create four-sided four shapes or quadrants wherever possible to create a good mesh topology. You could also make uh, tri-shapes or triangular shapes with three vertices, but these are much more difficult and problematic to work with in terms of creating a, a quality mesh. So you want to create four-sided shapes wherever you can. Duplicate, rotate and move your quarter three times to match the shape of the original logo. So you're duplicating each one rotating it, and moving it into position. Add materials to change two of the quarters into blue and two of them to white. In the same way, we can add a material slot, add a material, and then create a blue color and a white color and apply those to our shapes. Next, we're going to import a silver metallic material or texture and add it to the outer ring. So go to this website, which is matrep.parastudios.de. That's M-A-T-R-E-P, matrep. And find and download a silver material from the materials database there. Click File Append, and then navigate to the downloaded file. Inside that file you'll find a materials folder and inside that folder you'll find the silver material selected and it will be added or appended to your own materials library. Right click the outer circle and then apply the silver material to it by clicking on the checkered sphere. Do the same for the back of your disk and also the inner circle in the middle of your shape. The last aspect of the modeling part of our project is to add the text. Press Shift A and choose text from the drop down menu. Press Tab to enter edit mode and delete the word text and then type the letter B in capital. Rotate, scale, and position the letter to match the reference image as closely as possible. In the Properties panel, under the Type Properties tab, beneath the Geometry heading, increase the Extrude slider to 0 0.15. This will make your text 3D. Then adjust the Offset and Depth to create a 3D effect, and increase the resolution to 2, to improve the quality of the edge blend on your text. Add the silver material to the letter. And finally, duplicate the letter twice for the M 
and the W. Go into edit mode and press delete and then type M and repeat this for W and then move them into position. Right click to select one of the quarters and then click the smooth button. This will get rid of those unsightly visible uh, polygon shapes. Repeat for all the circles. Next we're going to animate the logo by making it spin around once. In the timeline, change the number of animation keyframes to 100 and you'll find this value uh, opposite the word end in your timeline. Select all objects by pressing the A key. Deselect the camera and the lamp by shift right clicking on them until they turn black. Next, start recording by pressing the automatic keyframe insertion button, which is represented by a red circle for record. Insert a keyframe at frame zero by dragging your playhead back to frame zero. For some reason, it always starts at frame one. Pull it back to frame zero and then press I on your keyboard for insert keyframe and then choose lock rot or lock rot scale. Either will do, we're just adjusting the location and the rotation of our object. But if you also want to adjust the scale, you can do lock rot scale. Or you can animate any of these elements independently. Scroll to frame 50 and then rotate the object 180 degrees and insert another keyframe. Scroll to frame 100 and then rotate the object another 180 degrees back to its original position. Next we will animate the camera. So scroll back to frame 1 and right click to select the camera. Press 0 to enter camera view and then shift F to enter fly mode which is a nice feature in Blender which allows you to control the camera from the first person perspective. You can control the camera in fly mode with the wheel on your mouse, scrolling forward and backwards to move forward and backward in 3D space. And if you hold down the wheel and move your mouse, you can pan up and down. Or if you just move your mouse up and down, you can tilt um, the view. So move to frame 50 and choose an alternative camera position. Repeat for frame 100. Finally, we're going to render our movie. So in the render panel, change the temp folder to your desktop or any folder that you would like to save your project in. Blender always uh, has the render settings set to the temp folder, which is quite difficult to find, especially on a Mac. Um, so it's always a good idea to change this to your desktop or some other easily findable location. Increase the resolution to 100% so that we can export at full high definition quality. Change the frame rate to 25 frames per second. Change PNG to QuickTime or MPEG so that we're actually exporting a movie instead of a series of images. Change the encoding preset to H.264, which is the, the best codec, the video codec that we're going to use for compressing our file. Click the animation button at the top of the render tab and go off and make yourself a cup of tea or coffee. Blender is going to start rendering each frame one by one. And it can take quite a while, although with 100 frames, it won't take that long but obviously just think 100 frames is only four seconds of animation when you're making 16 seconds or 30 seconds it's going to take a very long time to render out your movie so when your animation finishes rendering you can import it into premiere or any other video editing package that you would like and you can add music and sound effects 
titles, etc. before you upload it to your YouTube channel. Blender also has video editing features, which we'll look at in a later tutorial. But for now, you can just import your, your exported animation into your video editor of choice and use that. So this has been a brief tutorial to show you the process of creating an animated 3D logo ident from beginning to end, modeling to rendering.